I am in California in the Mojave Air and Space Port, and in this hangar houses the XB-1, which is a jet that will be going supersonic speeds today. They have a live stream going on, they have the pilots here, they're doing briefs, so much is going on because today marks a moment in history. Boom Supersonic, an aerospace company developing Overture, a supersonic passenger jet designed to travel at speeds of 1,800 kilometers per hour double the speed of today's commercial airlines. We're going to check out the test jet they've built, see it attempt to break the speed barrier, and we'll meet the man who'll be flying at supersonic speed. But before we get started, I wanted to let you all know that this video is brought to you by SBX Cars, which is our premium car auction platform. The link is below if you guys wanna check it out. Supersonic travel originates back in the 1940s at the time, Breaking the sound barrier wasn't just a dream, it was a race. Jet fighters were doing it first, but the real challenge was supersonic passenger travel. And that's how we got the Concorde, a plane so fast it could take you from New York to London in under three hours. The first ever Concorde flight was in 1969, but it wasn't until 1976 that the first commercial Concorde flight was completed from London to Bahrain. I'm about to meet the man who has the most supersonic flight hours under his belt, former Concorde pilot Mike Bannister. Hi, Mike. Hi, great to meet you. Pleasure to meet you as well. I have heard that you are arguably the most iconic Concorde pilot. Is that, <laughs> is that right? Well, I'm not sure that's true, but I certainly did enjoy it for the 22 years I was lucky enough to fly the airplane. Can you tell me what that experience was like? Well, I'm one of those people, I always wanted to be a pilot from the age of seven. I went to pilot training school, then went to join the airline, firstly on a thing called the VC-10, then flew Concorde in 1977 through 89. Wow. As a co-pilot and latterly an instructor. But in 1995, I was invited to come back as a chief Concorde pilot. And I had to think about it for almost a millisecond. <laughs> and, uh, and that was my career, you know, right up until the time I retired. How many flight hours do you have? Well, they tell me I've got more supersonic time than anybody else in the world. So I've done about just under 10,000 hours on Concorde and just under 7,000 hours of that was supersonic. While the Concorde was truly an engineering marvel at the time, it wasn't a commercial success. Extreme speeds meant much higher running costs, loud sonic booms, high fuel consumption and safety concerns. The Concorde was eventually grounded for good in 2003. But now supersonic travel is making a comeback with Boom Supersonic. They're on a mission to bring back ultra fast air travel. Their overture concept is a next generation supersonic airliner designed for net zero carbon emissions. Before the Overture takes flight, Boom is testing the waters with the XB-1, their subscaled test jet. Think of it as the blueprint for their future, proving that supersonic travel can be clean, quiet, and efficient. Before we check out the one-of-a-kind Boom supersonic jet and see Geppetto flying faster than the speed of sound, I'm about to have a go at the flight simulator myself and see if I have what it takes. This simulator is an exact match of the full-size XB-1 plane, which we'll be checking out later. With its wraparound screens, the same exact controls as the real thing. It will feel like I'm actually flying the experimental aircraft. We are about to meet the current pilot of the XB-1, Geppetto. <laughs> Hi, I'm Gabby. Hi, Gabby. Geppetto. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Welcome to the sim. This is, uh, this is intense. Wow. We've got an actual replication of the, of the cockpit. This is almost exactly what the, the cockpit in XB-1 looks like. Wow. That is a lot to be in charge of. What different maps do we have on here? These all look very different. Yeah, so this one's my primary display. That's mm -hmm. what I look at most of the time. XB-1 has two cameras on the, on the nose gear because I can't really see out the front of this very well. Okay. This shows me which way is up and how fast and how high I am. Uh -huh. And then that one's a backup to it. That's so cool. So this is a simulator. Yes. Right? How different is this versus what you actually fly? Uh, we work really hard to make this as realistic as possible. So if this is as accurate as you say it is, how about I take this for a ride and yeah, show me the ropes a little bit. Yeah, let's give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I feel like I'm in a I'm an actual pilot now. <laughs> Call <Yeah>, me Maverick. <laughs> all right, so first thing we'll do is we'll take all three throttles and just push those all the way forward. Keep going. So that's mil, oh. there you go. Yeah, okay. all the way. And then push with your right pet, right foot a little bit. Oh no, we're gonna go off-roading go. now. Oh no, you got it. 
There you go. And then you can re recenter. Nice job. So your airspeed's taken up. So oh, there's. 100. Is that miles per hour? Uh, that's knots. Just start gently pulling back on the stick. Oh, right one. Okay. Yep. There you go. Hold it right there. Perfect. Now you can see that the ground come ah, up. Ah. Okay. When do I? Now you're airborne. That is way more sensitive than I thought it was. And you can uh, retract the landing gear. Oh, so that pull that out, oh, ouch. and then up. There you go. Still going up. Yep. Okay. Let's try to go fast. Now I've, oh, it's, it's difficult. There's definitely a good amount of feedback. Yeah. Okay. So here's your Mach number, ticking up to 0 0.88, 0 0.89. Is it like the space movies where you press a button and then shh? <laughs> yeah, we haven't figured out light speed yet, or at least we're not <laughs> telling anyone. All right, well, now you're uh, supersonic, so Mach 1.11, so I... Uh, I think clearly you've got this, so I'm gonna step out and you're on your own. Uh-oh. Uh, I guess we're, we're flying until we're out of fuel. When I'm out here looking at the map and I see from my peripheral, like when I turn left or right, it's kind of trippy. I feel like I'm really flying something here. We can actually do a barrel on this? It's not very good at it. This is not- a <laughs> But it'll do this it. Uh, maybe. There you go. I like maybe. So yeah. Saying there's a chance. <laughs> All right. Once you see 350, pull the pull the nose up a little bit, and then put the uh, the put stick the toward the left. Yeah. Well, yep. It doesn't like it. It doesn't well, like we're doing it. it. We're doing it. <laughs> Woohoo! Supersonic stunts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. Nice job. Here's the runway there. Do you want to put Not this crash. into the runway? The green? And then, yes. Ah, oh, wait, that's right. <laughs> Back to so the left. Concentrated in my life. <laughs> okay, now push the throttles forward just a bit. Start pulling back on the stick. There you go. Now pull the throttles back. Push the nose down. All right, start pulling back again. Oh, I was good. <laughs> a little bit hard, but, uh, I think you'd be able to walk away from it. <laughs> <laughs> so would you call that a success or? Yeah, we can call it a success. <laughs> kind of, sort of, not really. That's all right. We survived. Yeah, nice job. Woo, thank you. Yeah. My heart is beating. <laughs> the time has finally come to check out the real supersonic jet and see it in action flying at speeds of 2,000 kilometers per hour. I am here with Nick, who's our chief flight test engineer. It is his job to take drawing on a napkin to this beautiful finished project. Can you tell me like a little bit more about this? Yeah, so XP-1 looks a little bit different than most airplanes that you'd see at an airport. Mm -hmm. That's just because it's designed to go incredibly fast. It's long and very pointy and very skinny. I've noticed that. That like has an interesting curve to it. Why is that? Yeah, so uh, really is to minimize the cross-sectional area. So it's basically as thin when viewed from the front as possible mm -hmm. to create the least amount of drag that it possibly can. You can kind of see like a ridge that runs down oh, the front. Okay. And so that's done to actually control the way the air flows over the top. Wow. And then in the back, uh, obviously the wing is, is, you know, starts about halfway down the fuselage. It's a delta wing, but it, more specifically than that, if you look at it from the top, it's called an ogive wing, and it, it defines like the shape of like a Coke bottle. Got it. And then up top, what is that? Looks like what I would assume a hood scoop. Obviously, mm -hmm. this is an airplane, so. It, is that in, do the same thing? So XP-1 has three engines, three J85 engines. Two of them, the outboard engines. Is that uh, here on the side? That's right. This is the right engine intake. There's a mirror image of this inlet on the other side of the airplane. Mm -hmm. And the center engine gets its air from the top of the fuselage. Oh, okay. So you can see everything that's painted white is carbon fiber. And then it transitions Ooh. to metallic. And all of this metal is titanium. Wow. And wow. that's done for thermal reasons. Titanium is very strong and it has good high temperature capability. This is actually, I think, the highest energy capacity break in any wheel size. There's a 12 million foot pound energy capacity carbon break oh, wow. that fits inside of a 13 inch rim. So I was told with the shape of the, the nose and everything, which is for aerodynamics, mm -hmm. that they can't actually see over the front. Is that accurate? Right. So uh, because we've got that unique wing, we fly at a high angle of attack. That means the angle that the wing is presented to the oncoming air is quite high. Okay. You know, like conventional airplane, low angle of attack, this airplane, very high angle of attack. And because of that, it's just the nose obscures the pilot's view of the runway where he needs to land. Yeah. So we actually have two cameras on the nose gear, and this just feeds a live video right to the screen in front of 
the pilot's face, mm -hmm. and we overlay the flight information like altitude and airspeed mm -hmm. on top of that video feed. So he's got all the information that he needs to land it. That's so cool. Breaking the sound barrier means the XV-1 will be traveling at Mach 1, or 1,200 kilometers per hour. That's like saying three times the top speed of the Bugatti Chiron, one of the world's fastest cars. These speeds mean traveling from London to New York in under four hours. That's half the time it takes with conventional flights. This is it. We're about to witness an actual test flight for Boom Supersonic. Remember, this is all experimental technology, so the stakes are really high. Yes. Go. Dampers. Go. Flutter. Flutter. Go. Loads. ECS. Go. Drop. Drop. Go. Test director. Go. So let's take advantage of this and just watch XB1 on her takeoff roll as she leaps into the air. And she's airborne. Wow, that was fantastic. Doesn't she look gorgeous? So this is the really exciting part. Watch the mount number in the middle of the street. There we are. XB1 is supersonic, faster than the speed of sound. They did it. Geppetto and the team, they are going Mach 1.1, but they have gone supersonic speeds. So history has officially been made. They are still in the sky, and I cannot wait to ask and see what it was like up there in the sky. But you did it. You did it, guys. As the pilot started his descent, I was sad this crazy day was coming to an end. If this is the future of air travel, I can't wait to experience it myself. This is so cool experiencing this moment in history today. <laughs> Geppetto, welcome back to planet Earth. How was it? Thanks, it was, uh, it was a great flight. It was real exciting. Team did great, the plane behaved great, but it's always good to be back on Earth. Ah, oh, that's so good to hear. <laughs> yeah. I was watching, I saw you went mock speed a couple of times. Were yeah. you just out there having fun at that point? No, we had a, we were sharing the airspace with someone, so we couldn't get all the data we needed on one run. So we got to do it a couple times. Got it. it. Seemed like it was fun up there. It was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the moment I've really been waiting for. Show me the cockpit that you sit in and show me a little bit about this plane that nobody else can. Cool. Yeah, let's go check it out. Awesome. All right, so uh, you can climb in from this side. Just put your hand up on the, on the top of the... On the top? Yeah. There is not as much room in here as you would think. <laughs> This is just like the simulator. It is, I right? I know this. <laughs> yeah. You know, just put it down. Like, I got this. He said I walked away, so <laughs> yeah. I can fly this one too. How does it feel for you to be in here when you're knowing that you're going to go supersonic compared to a lot of the other jets that you've flown before? I love it in here. Like mm -hmm. this is this is my happy place. This is this is where I feel at home. I remember like the first time I got in this in this jet. I'd been w watching it. I'd been working on the on the program, not as a pilot. Never thought I'd have the opportunity to actually climb in there. And I remember like climbing up these stairs, this very ladder, like stepping into it and kind of looking around. Like you guys are really gonna let me do this? Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> so surreal. Yeah. That's kind of how I feel now. Yeah. What, you're gonna just let me sit in it? <laughs> That's amazing. This is a coin that flew in in this aircraft on this flight. So that coin has been supersonic. Wow, this is so cool. Thank you so much, Geppetto. I really don't feel deserving of this, but I will treasure this forever. This has been places that I have not yet been yet. Looking forward <laughs> to getting you there. What an exciting day. History has been made. Supersonic travel is so possible for civilians. The XB-1 has proven it and laid down the grounds for Overture to you know, move forward with everything going on. And I hope you all love this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks. <laughs>